Okay, this is the swimming fish tutorial. First, you want to open up After Effects. When you open up After Effects, if it hasn't been open for a while, you'll get the welcome screen. And we want to start a new composition. And this composition we want to, to call Swimming Fish. Make sure it's 1280 by 720. And we want to change the frame rate. Since I went with the HDV, HDTV preset, we want to change the frame rate to 24 frames per second. The duration should be 5 seconds, and the background color can be black. Now we want to save this After Effects project. And we want to call this project, make sure we're in the Projects folder, we want to call this project last name, first initial, underscore AE tutorials and save that. Now we want to set up the file and we really want to have more comps to put things into. We know what the names of them are and where I will tell you what they will be. So let's go ahead and make some new comps. These will be empty comps for now. We're just making places for things to exist. We haven't put in anything that actually has anything in it yet. So let's click on the new comps. And there's a button down at the bottom here. We want to have the same settings and we want to name this comp Diver Dan. And make sure that all the settings are right. correct. 5 seconds, 24 frames per second. Okay. That's Diver Dan. And now we're going to make a composition that will be big enough to hold all of the other compositions in it. So we're going to make it 15 seconds long. So you can start it here. Once again with the button R, we can go up to Composition. This is the other way to start a new composition. Composition, new composition brings up the same window. And now, we're going to call this one Under the Sea with our last name. So, last name, first initial, Under the Sea. And now we want to make sure it's the right size, frame rate, and then we want it to be 15 seconds long because we're going to have three five-second comps in one. Okay, leave the background color black. Say okay. So these are our three comps. Now, when we bring in other things, we'll have to change the number of seconds for each new comp because it will retain the last second count. Okay, so here's Swimming Fish, Diver Dan, Under the Sea. Click on the tab for Swimming Fish so it's in front because that's the first one we're going to work on. Come up to the project window. Right click. Import File. First, we'll import the audio file. Audio, and there it is, Bubbles MP3. All acceptable files, format MP3, open. And there it is in your project window. Now, right click, and we're going to import some of the other files the Illustrator file, the Photoshop file, and the JPEG. So, first, we'll do the Illustrator file. So, import file, go to your layered, and we want to get the illustrator file. We want to import this as composition retain layer sizes. And open. There it is. Okay, now we want to import file, PSD, import as composition Retain layer sizes. 
Composition Retain Layer Sizes, Editable Layer Styles. Okay, so we, if we have any layer styles in our Photoshop file, we'll be able to edit that. Okay, and now we want to import our JPEG. So we're going to go to Flat Images, and we want Ocean 720. Okay, so now we have what we call assets in here. Notice when you import these as composition, Fish 01 and Fish 02, they also bring in a folder with the layers. If you look in that, it will tell you what layers there are in those files. So that's handy. Now we want to drag these assets from the project window to the timeline of the swimming fish. We want to bring down first fish 01, then fish 02, then ocean 720. And we want to save this, so command S. First we're going to work on the fish 01. So let's select Fish01 in the timeline window. There it is, Fish01. And you can lock the other layers so you don't change them while you're working on one. We've got it selected. We're going to press P because we want to edit the position. Now, let's change the position coordinates by entering numbers in these fields. So in the X, we want to have 175. And in the Y, we want to have 200. That looks good. Let's save that command as. We want to click the stopwatch next to position, and that will begin the keyframing. We only click the stopwatch at the beginning when you put in the first keyframe. After that, if you click it again, it will erase all of the keyframes. So you want to just stay with that. Now we want to go to the frame that occurs at 212. So we can either type in 2 colon 12 and hit enter. And you see that the current time indicator moves there. We could also have dragged that cross until it stopped at 212. So there's different ways of going to the different places on the timeline. Be aware of that. You can also actually scrub here if you put your cursor over it. You see that, that you get a hand with double-headed arrow, and that will allow you to change what frame you're on. But right now we want to be on this frame, and now we want to move the fish all the way to the other side. Okay, puts a, a keyframe there automatically. Now we want to go to 413 so we can drag like this. I could say that's scrubbing. And now the current time indicator is at the last frame in the sequence. We want to drag the fish back to the original location. And don't put the dot right on top because that gets a little confusing. Just put it right close to it. And now if we play it, we can make it go all the way across and back again. But he swims backwards, which we don't want. So if we stop that and go back to the beginning. Now what we want to do is we want to make the fish turn around. We want to go to this keyframe that's at 212. We want to now change the scale. So first we're going to put a keyframe in for this position for scale right there. So his scale is 100 to 100 right there. And now we want to go to the next frame. So you go to 213, that's the next frame. And on this frame we want to set a keyframe. We can click right there and that sets a keyframe. We want to unlink the chain for proportion and we want to change 
the first number, which is the x, to negative 100 and hit return. And now he's facing the other way. There are two keyframes for scale. One does not take effect until you get to 212, and that just says 100%, so it won't change anything. The next one takes effect on 213, and it's negative 100% width. So it changes immediately without any transition, but then it retains that same, that, those same coordinates all the way through to the end. So now let's see what that looks like. Just go right to the beginning and press the space bar, and you can see what happens. So that looks pretty good. Now we're done with him for now, so let's lock him. And let's unlock fish number two. For fish number two, we want to be on frame zero, zero, which we are. Make sure you've got position. And when you have the position showing, you can click on the keyframe. So you've started the keyframing. Change this number on the first frame to 1500. He's off the screen. Now we want to go to 423 and change the number. Once again, we want to change the X position. First number to negative 220. And now if you press the space bar, he will swim all the way across. That's Command S to save that. Now I want to make him wiggle. So I'm going to select Fish02 in the comp and I'm going to double click so I can enter that comp. And here's Fish02. Now there's a lovely tool at the top called well, it's the Puppet Pin Tool or we call it the Pin Tool almost all, all the time. Uh, Command P or just click on it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to place a pin on his nose right near the middle of his body and then at the tail. So these pins, if you look down here, these pins are now going to be keyframed. And if I press U, you can see all the keyframes that exist for this layer. And there they are. So Puppet, Mesh 1, Deform, there's a whole bunch of subgroupings there. Puppet pin 3, 2, and 1. And 1 is his nose, 2 is his midsection, and 3 is his tail. Get the arrow tool. And now we want to move in. Oh, before we do that, we have to check, you see, when we brought this in, it brought it in as being 15 seconds long. Once again, I told you, when you've done something, it will retain that, that setting. And that last composition we made was 15 seconds. So we want to go to Composition, Composition Settings, and we want to change this to 5 seconds. And now you see it's 5 seconds long. Now we want to go to a little place further. 1 second is a good arbitrary number. You can choose other numbers, but let's just do this every second for this particular time. And let's move the pins with the arrow tool. So we've got the Selection tool, and we come up here to his nose, and let's move it down. And let's take his tail and move that down to... Let's go over to two seconds, and let's move his nose up a little bit, and his tail up a little bit. Let's maybe make him bend a little bit down that way. And we'll just do this every second till he's wiggling. And you can make his tail come in a little bit, so it looks like he's swishing it, perhaps. And then you can move it back out again, up. And maybe move his nose out a little bit, so it looks like he's reaching for something. And then go to the end. And at the end, what we want to do is we want to have the original positions. So I'm going to copy those. Command C, and then I'm going to Command V. So that puts in the original positions. And now let's play this to see what happens.
Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's command S to save that. And then go back to the tab for the swimming fish. Come back to the beginning. And let's let's do a RAM preview. Up here in the preview window that is in the upper right, you'll see it says preview, you've got different playing controls. The one on the end is a RAM preview, which will go through and render into memory and then play it again as close to real time as it possibly can. So that's a good thing to do. So there we have the swimming fish. So press the spacebar to stop. Go back to the beginning. Command S to save. And there you go.